Hello and welcome to my video tutorial series RPG in a Box. I'm Karsten and in this episode I will explain how to use Terrain types and collision overrides. So up to now our navigation lines define our movement area and explicitly just the navigation lines. So every field with a walk and interaction line or walk only line was walkable and every other field wasn't. So from now on, we want to add a new definition. So we want to decide for specific characters on which tile, tiles they can walk and on which tiles they don't. So to do this, we have to add a terrain type. And we can do this in the object properties. So to explain the concept, in the first step, I want to make my river walkable for water slimes, but not for the player. So the player has to use the bridge to cross the river, but the water slime can walk through the water. Okay, so let's go to the river, uh, river tiles. So I have my river tiles here. And in the model properties, we see the option to define the terrain type. So we can give keywords for specific terrain types, but only a single type per tile. We cannot combine this like text or something else, which makes the, the calculation for the rules much harder. So a single type per tile. So in the first step, I deleted them, didn't I? Okay, in the first step, we want to add a new terrain type by pressing the add button. So let's show it again. We press the, print, uh, the pencil icon here and add a new type and call it river. So additionally, we add water flat and water deep for later. Okay, so let's save this. And then we want to add the defined terrain types to our tiles. So in the first step, we add the river tag, the river type to all river tiles. So we can simply add a single option per tile, as I said, and we have to save this explicitly. So now we tagged our river to be a river type. So, and now nothing has changed except we added a terrain type to the river. We cannot walk on river tiles. To change this, we have to set the river tiles as passable. So activate the passable button and save it. So it isn't updated automatically in our map. So we have to draw the walk and interact lines through our river as well. If you draw new river tiles with activated passable button, the navigation lines were drawn automatically. So now we have to do this manually. And be careful while drawing near your walls because of the misaligned navigation problems. So I recommend don't do this. Instead, use automatic, uh, automatically attached tiles or check carefully that your navigation lines are not attached to the walls. So we will check this as well. Okay, so that's pretty good. And now let's check if we have aligned navigation uh, navigation lines aligned to our wall tiles. So we haven't. We haven't explicitly not. Okay. So every single navigation line is attached to a ground field pretty well. Okay, 
So now every single character can walk through the water to the world. So, and now we want to add specific rules for each character type on which tile types they can walk and on which they don't. Okay, so we go to the character button, uh, character panel, and select the first character, Rex. So, in the model properties, we have the setting for terrain types. And the default is all. So Rex can walk on every single terrain type. And it's pretty good. But now we want to reduce the options for Rex on which tiles he can walk. So we have two other options. We can prohibit specific tiles for this character, or we can restrict the character to a defined set of tiles. So you can choose the shortest list. So by default, my character Rex can walk on every single tile except a prohibited set. So I choose this. And Rex should not walk in deep water and rivers, but he can walk in flat water. Okay, so let's say okay. To select multiple entries, as a if you use the left mouse button, you can just select a single option. And here, if you press the control key and the left mouse button, you can combine several options. So Rex is prohibited from rivers and deep water for now. Later in the episode, Rex will begin to swim. Okay, but uh, it's not a topic for now. Okay. So let's go to the next character. The water slime should walk on every single field, including, including the water and the river. So that's okay. The magma slime should be prohibited from walking on water tiles like this. And the fish is restricted to a specific terrain type, and that is flat and deep water. He cannot swim in rivers because my river is too flat. And my fish would swim um, on top of the water. OK, so that's it for now. So now we can check the result in game. So from now on, our character navigation possibilities are determined from a combination of our navigation lines matched with the terrain types and the restrictions or um, prohibited tiles. So now we want to check this in-game. So in the first step, we want to check that Rex cannot walk in rivers. So let's go into the game. and check the result. So Rex cannot walk in the river. OK. So we should check the result in the opposite way. We added the river tile to our slime. So to check this, we can override our map properties. So our player is now a water slime. So And then we should be able to walk in rivers. Let's check this out. So, and now we should be able to walk through the river. And it's pretty well. Okay, so this is our desired result. So let's come to the next point. The slime can walk through the river. And the slime has a behavior. So I want to show you what I did. I added the attackable in real time button. So my slime is attackable. And then I get new options. I get 10 experience per kill, 
Um, the movement interval of the water slime is fixed. So he walks every 10 seconds in a random direction and he seeks out the player if the player is close to the slime. So one tile beside the water slime. And here's the magma slime. He has a, a, a bigger seek out range. So if the player come in a uh, circle of 10 tiles, the magma slime will begin to seek out the player and the player can just avoid it by jumping in the deep water because the magma slime cannot follow him in this. So to avoid water slimes, I will add a new behavior. So a water slime cannot walk on dry surface. Okay. To do this, we will add a new type of tile and call it dry. So every water character is prohibited from walking on dry terrain. Okay, so let's add the terrain types to every single sand tile like this. So, and then the water slime isn't able to follow the player across sand areas or dry areas to be precisely. So we additionally have the sand tile. And don't forget to save. I really wish we had a save and close all button. Tile, try. Okay. So, and simply that's it. Now we have to adjust the character settings. So, let's add the definition that a water slime is not be able to walk on dry ground. So terrain types. The water slime from now on is prohibited to walk on dry areas like this. And we can check this again. We already have the water slime. So let's jump in the game and check the result. So because we start on the sand path, we all already on a dry area. So we cannot walk to edges in dry areas, but we can leave our dry area. So the engine only checks the next tile. So I'm restricted to walk on a dry area, a dry tile. But if I'm teleported to some dry tile, or if I start on a dry tile, um, nothing happens. So I have to, to be constant in the map design. So don't spawn water characters on dry areas. Okay. So that is the next step. And now we want to begin with the sea and the ocean definition. So in preparation for the Flat and deep water, we can add the navigation lines to our lake and to our ocean. I will use the fast forward mode. So and now every character can walk in flat and deep water uh, because we haven't added uh, definition of the tiles. So. Let's do this now. And we have to add the text or the terrain types for every single water field. So we have a lake, which is flat water. And this is really repetitive. So it's much better to define a concept at the start of your game development process define your fields and your concepts and um, do this while creating the maps. 
So, this is deep water, and the definition of deep water is water is deep if it is so deep that ca Rex cannot stand in the water. Um, so, in deep water, Rex cannot stand with a head outside the water. Okay? So, this is deep water because Rex has a high of 10 voxels. And my water is deeper than 10 voxels, so Rex is under the surface. Okay. So, and this is flat water because Rex stands here in this area, and Rex is 8 voxels high, so the head is about this position. So, this is flat water. And the idea is Rex can walk in flat water. And Rex can swim in deep water. And I want to accomplish this by scripting together with you so that our character Rex is automatically um, that Rex begins automatically with swimming if he uh, reaches deep water. Okay. So we have tagged our fields and now we have to check the behavior of our characters so the fish can swim in flat and deep water it's pretty well and um, he's already swimming because it's a fish so everything is fine we have to do a transition between walking and swimming um, the magma slime pretty well and Rex is now able to walk in flat water, but not in deep, because um, we cannot swim, but I can show you how to do this. So Rex is just prohibited from walk in the river. And we additional want to add a magma type for the magma river. Okay, so let's do this first. So the last terrain type I'm missing is um, the magma type. So this field should be magma flat. So, okay, like this. And now we can finish our character settings. So Rex is prohibited from rivers and flat magma. The fish is restricted to water. The water slime is prohibited from dry and magma areas. And the magma slime is prohibited from water. So everything's fine. And now we can check the result. And I want to show you a very special problem we have to solve now. So to check the in-game result, we have to set the player override back to none. So our start script defines that Rex is our main character. Okay. Then let's jump in the game. And we now want to try to walk in flat and deep water. So, and surprise, surprise, our Rex is walk on top of the lake. So it's like ice, but not like water. So we cannot swim and we cannot walk in the water and also, our fishes are swimming on top of the water. Also, there are <laughs> buggy tiles for my episode preparations. So what we want to achieve is that Rex stands in the water like this. And to achieve this, I will show you the concept of collision overrides. Okay, so to the basics. This is a deep water field. And currently, character is walking on the uppermost voxel layer, like this. Because the uppermost voxel on a grid is the definition of the navigation of every single character. To achieve setting a character to a lower position, we have to use an alternative collision object. So, and this is a collision override, and it, we find it here. And now we have to define a new shape which is used to determine the navigation or the, the, the walk 
path over the single voxels. So to do this, we will add a new object for our lake. So this is the lake and Rex is walking on top of the water. So I will add new shapes and call it underscore shape underscore and the object name. So, but first I want to restart my engine so I can avoid to close millions of tabs. So we want to add a shape for a lake. So we copy the lake and call it shape. And I use underscore shape to, to um, mark the tile for myself so that I don't use such tiles in the map that are just collision shapes. So this is the shape for a lake. OK. And in my lake shape, I want to remove the water surface so my character walks now in the sand. OK, so it's pretty easy like this. And additional, I will strip the terrain type from the new model. So, and I will do this for every single lake field and every single water tile in my world. Okay, so now Rex is walking on this line. And to combine the tiles, we have to add the shape of the shape tile to the collision override of the lake tile. So I will show you in my other fields. So um, a more detailed thing is the ocean grass straight tile. So character, uh, our character Rex is walking this line and we want that he is standing in the middle of the water. So we have to use another navigation object. So I can use this and I call it shape test to make it short. So, and we want avoid using this object body so we remove the water and now we can add it in a deeper precision. And it's unimportant which color set you use. You can just use a plain white body like this to define where your character is walking. You can also repaint it uh, to, to red if you want to make clear that this is not an object for your map editor. Instead, it's just a collision shape to combine with other tiles. So you can also strip unimportant voxels from the model like this and just hold the collision shape to make it more precisely and more clear that you use a collision override with this object and not a drawable tile. So, you know? Okay, so I want to. I don't want you to save this and I don't want to use this. I will show you my other collision objects. So I use the, the lake shapes, which we do, did a few seconds before, and the river shape, which is with stripped of water. So the character walks on the sand. And this is, no, this is my old shape. I don't want to use this. And uh, yes, this is my, uh, my ocean. So Rex is walking in the water on the lower level, so he stands um, outside the water with his chest and his head. Okay, and the same for the deep water. So I'm walking straight through the water and it looks very really weird. So we want to add a swimming animation in the next step, but just make, let's make this in the first step. So now we have to use our collision overrides to fix our strange behavior. So for the lake, we have to use the collision override shape lake. So you see, it's exactly 
named the same like the lake, but with a suffix underscore shape. So we can add this to our lake. And I use a different approach to the ocean because um, it's a little bit better to avoid the exact naming because um, it is not dependent if the ocean is connected to grass, to stone, or something like this. Just the shape is depend also is, is important. So it's a shape for water in the inner corner. So water is deep and the river not. So I can say shape lake, shape lake corner inner without the grass part. It's much better than um, holding the grass in the name. So, but for now it is okay. Okay. So let's go on with overriding the collision shapes. So the collision shape for this is, and I have to see the name, lake corner diagonal. And here is no scroll bar. Lake, corner diagonal, save. Lake, corner inner. And this also is a very repetitive work. Lake, grass, corner, outer. So avoid mistakes in your naming concept to, to, to have to do this multiple times. It's a pain. So lake, grass, straight. Okay. And we also want to add it for the ocean. So this is the water deep. And this is the water diagonal near the water corner inner. And this is the water corner outer. And this is the water corner diagonal. And it's important which orientation your models use. So it has to be the same orientation like the, the object, also the, 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 the ocean corner diagonal should use the same model with a lower water surface. So you don't have to, you, you don't have to, you, you, you mustn't rotate this object. Otherwise you get errors in your behavior. So Rex is walking through sand and something like this. So shape, water, corner, straight. Okay. And the river as well. So river, curve left, and river curve right. We nearly get it. River curve right, and river straight. And that's it. Okay. So we can check the results in game. And now we can walk to flat water and we can walk to this flat water and we can walk to the deep water, which looks weird. Okay. So let's come to the last point of this tutorial to add the swim animation for Rex. So Rex should swim automatically if he comes into deep water and she, he should start to walk if he come close uh, back in uh, flat water. Okay, now magma slime is hunting us. Pretty nice, but he cannot hunt us in. Uh, hunting in, in, in water area like this. Okay, pretty nice. Um, so I added a swim animation for Rex in the last frames. So 
this is the idle animation for being idle in water. And additional, I have the swim animation like this. So I used maybe strange keywords in the first list. If you see it the first time, I have the idle animation and the idle water animation. So the RPG in the box engine uses keywords and there's a predefined keyword idle. And if you call an animation like the keyword idle, this is used by default for the idle state of the character. Pretty easy. So, and I added a new keyword idle underscore water to override the idle with the new water animation for idle. And if we we left the deep water, we set it back so the keyword idle uses the idle animation. Okay, the same with the walk in water. So I will show you the results. This is the idle water animation. Nothing happens. And this is the walk water animation. Pretty nice. Okay, and the same with the walk water animation. By default, the engine uses the walk animation while walking because it's named like the keyword walk. And if we come to deep water, we override the walk keyword with walk water animation. And if we leave the deep water, we set the walk keyword back to the walk animation instead of the walk water animation. I hope this is clearly described so weird naming okay so how can we do this how can we accomplish this idea so we can use the hooks so in your game configuration you have a global event scripting and here are specific events which we can hook with a script so, and we have character enters the tile, which means a character is has entered the new field. So we can use this, or we can use the character exits the tile. Because I want to know the next field to check if this is deep water, I want to get the new field. So I think it's a good way to hook on character exits a tile. And if I use character stops on a tile, it's too late. So I want to use this. And we can add every single script we have predefined and saved by opening the box and add the script. So we have to define our new script, which handles the transition from walking to swimming and back to walking. So to achieve this, what won't we do? If character stands in the flat water, nothing happens. So if we exit this tile and the next tile is deep water like this, we override the animations to the water main animation types. And if we stay in deep water, everything is fine. And at the moment we leave a tile and the next one is not of the type the water, we set it back to the walk and idle default animations. Okay, so if we hook the script on the event, we have an initiator and we have self. Self is the tile where we start from. So we can make it more clearly if we script. So let's add a new script and let's call it um, Deter min movement. Okay, like this. And now we want to add our scripting logic. So I want to use the code editor because most of the used keywords are not predefined in the um, results. Okay. In the first step, we want to check if the initiator is the player, because just the player should start swimming. If a slime is walking in the deep water, we won't, we won't override the player animations. So, okay. To check this, we add if initiator is not equal 
player. Then, and we simply return with nothing and end the script. That's it. To see it in the code editor, we have the initiator keyword is not equals and it's not predefined, as you can see. You can play with this. Um, you have to type the key names by yourself. So the way is close to writing your code by yourself. And we do this from episode to episode in a in more variety of coding. So I hope you get used to coding while we code in the episodes. Okay. So, and now we want to add the behavior change for the player. And we can do this by getting the tiles from the player. So I said we have a self keyword and we can check what is self if we're not sure, if we, we are not sure what is self. So we can say log message and then let's simply say we log self. So we see what exactly happens. And now we can save and add this script to the character exits tile. Like this. Now let's jump in the game and we see what happens. So we are standing on a sand path and we leave it. Okay. And in the moment we exit the tile, the script is triggered and printed self. And self is a tile with type path sand straight. And this is the old tile we left. So it's not the tile we want to have. So we have to get the tiles from our character. To do this, we can check the character section. And we can see that we have a list of tiles at our character. So if we call player.tiles or initiator.tiles, we get a list or an array of tiles. And at the index zero, we get a tile where Rex goes to. So the next tile, and then we get tile. And from the tile, we can get the Tarong type, which is a string and which is exactly the Tarong type definition we gave them. So let's use this. We want to add an if statement and if initiator dot tiles, this is an array of tiles and at index zero, it is a tile. So the, the next tile where Rex will stop. And then we get the Tarong type from this tile. And if this is equals to deep water, which comes from our definition, Not this. Here we are, deep water. Then we want to override animations for Rex. Override animation. So we can simply add a combination of drag and drop and scripting. So I think it's a really good approach also to learn coding. So, and otherwise else, we set it back to our defaults and simply that's it. And so this is our if case. And now we have to fill the gaps. If our next field is deep water, we override walk with walk in water and we override idle with idle in water. And if the next field is not deep water, we set walk back to walk and idle back to idle. So this is the animation key, which should be overwritten. And this is the animation name, which is set to be triggered by this key. Yeah? So if we walk, 
the trigger walk is fired and by default it plays the animation with the same name and we overwrite it in the meantime to walk on water and then we set it back to walk so the key and the animation name has the same naming that's the concept so and this is not enough so if we come to deep water we overwrite it and in the next field we overwrite it and overwrite it and overwrite it and overwrite it again and again and again and again and we don't want to use this so we add a new um condition so and and now we check if the initiator property called movement type is set and maybe is set to swimming so if we change our animation types we set a new property movement type which holds the type of movement movement for our character so initiator dot property and then we call it movement type is not equal to swimming which is the default case because by default there is no defined property so it is definitely not swimming so by default our character is walking with a walk animation called walk so okay and in every opposite of this definition we have the else case and we do not want this so if we are not in deep water or if we are swimming or if we are not in deep water and not uh, in and we are swimming we have the else also if not this or not this or not this and this so the opposite of this this evaluation so to be more precisely we copied it and say we want just we won't just to use an else we want to use an else if and paste it so the opposite we want to check is if we are not in deep water and we are swimming so we just leave the deep water field and we have the swimming state in our movement property so then we change it a single time then and we have to erase this one okay and now we have to add the status as well so initiator dot property we can simply copy this it's less error thrown so like this and this is not an evaluation we set it to swimming and here we set it to walking which is our default okay let's read this if we come to a new field we check if it is the player when it's not the player we exit the script if it's the player we resume or we continue so if the initiator which is the player from this line on if the player stands on a tile with terrain type equals to deep water and the player hasn't the movement type set to swimming which is the default case then we override the walk animation with walk in water we override the idle animation with idle in water and we set the movement type to swimming okay then if we come to a new deep water field this is not true because this is okay but we have the swimming type so this isn't calculated else this is false so this is also not calculated so we end the script pretty well if we leave deep water this is not calculated because this is not true so this is true and we have the movement type equals to swimming then we set the override animation back for the walk key to walk and the idle key to idle and set the movement type back to walking so the next 
change is if we come back to deep water with the walking type or everything else than swimming. So that's pretty nice and this should work. And now let's check the result in game. And then we finished the episodes. So now comes the big result. We can walk in the lake. We can walk in flat water. And if our slime comes close to us, I mean, huh, we can, we cannot swim. Okay. So I checked it. Um, I have a misspelled Tarong type. I don't use the name deep water. I use the name water deep. So that's the reason we why it doesn't work and the engine cannot give me a hind because it's not a key it's a, a simple string so then I mean, we have to finish the lines so okay like this looks pretty good and now we can check the result in game and see our character swimming <laughs> hopefully <laughs> okay so software development is a Complicated task. So, and Rex is swimming. Nice. Okay, so we can handle the swimming stuff. So you see, uh, Rex changes the animation while changing the tile. It's a little bit late, but it's okay for now. We haven't to be over perfectly. So, okay, more than perfect, too perfect. Okay, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, so if you do, give me thumbs up. I would be very excited about the description and hopefully we see us in one of the next episodes as well. So have a nice day. Bye.